shop shed has been sighted. So now we need to enrobe the siding in some sort of protection. In the industry, we call this paint. I'm using 100% acrylic latex paint in a semi-gloss sheen. I like the look and durability of a nice semi-gloss. Not too glossy and not matte. Who knew that you could use that super cool scaffolding for painting too? Well, just about everybody probably. I'm using a fuzzy roller to apply the paint, as ain't nobody got time for brushes. And a roller leaves a better finish with no streaks. The scaffolding doesn't fit back here, so I'm using the old broom handle painting technique where you use a broom handle to paint with your roller. I gave the ends a second coat off camera. Trust me, it was just like the first coat. Now to reveal the color of choice, which if you saw the thumbnail for the video, you already know. Good job with the spoilers there. It's dark red, maroon, wine, or old barn color. Whatever you call it. So here I needed to use a brush so I could get into the tight corners and trim without getting paint on everything. Well, mostly not getting paint on everything. I did do some baveur, as the French would say. I used a shingle that I'd cut for the ridge cap that I had left over to try and stop the baveurs or messes. I made sure to put lots of paint in the corners for waterproofing. Even though I'm gonna put trim all around here, my mom always says you can't have too much protection. Then I painted all around the bottom so I wouldn't get paint on the concrete. I also painted all the seams in the siding. And of course around the electrical conduit. Here I'm painting down the alley behind the shed. Trust me, I'm not back there smoking or plotting my next move in Stratejo. The roller comes out to do the heavy lifting, or painting in this scenario. This paint is nice and thick and I'm applying it nicer and thicker.
Now we can see what happens down the back alley. It's basically just painting. The first gallon is gone. You can see that I was applying it very liberally. Usually it should only take most of a gallon to paint the whole outside. Two gallons ended up being about exactly what was needed for two coats or couche in French. Couche also means diaper in French. Anyways, I did the second diaper off camera. Now for the finishing touches. I have these 12 foot polypropylene boards that will cover the transition from red to white and a bunch of 8 foot boards made out of the same material as the siding for the corners. These I painted white with the same semi-gloss paint as the ends. I nailed them together to form a corner and put silicone caulking down the insides of the seam. I used 4 inch long thick galvanized nails to attach everything. This definitely ended up being the hardest part of the day. Sinking all those long nails gave my forearms a great workout. Problem was they kept bending, so it was really frustrating getting to the end.
So here's how it is today. I've installed lights around the front door. And a floodlight over the garage door. The paint made a hard shell or crust on the siding. It's just a little shiny, but it looks great. And it's gone through the first snow of the year and it still looks fresh. In fact, it's snowing right now as I'm recording this in the makeshift studio here. Let's see if we can see it out the window. All right, back to reading this script. Mm. Where were we? Leaves get stuck around the back here, which keeps water there with it. I think I'm gonna put some baseboards or something around the bottom here, all the way around. Probably the same polyboard stuff that I use between the sides and the ends. Well, there you go, I think it looks great. It's kind of cathartic to see what it's become during this year. 2020's been a doozy, hasn't it? Hopefully it gets better. Anyways, next video will be inside stuff, like drywall, mudding and taping, and paint. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.